welcome to Creative for the Impossible. It's me, Chrissy Nelson here. I am just about to pull in to hang out with my good friends, Amick and Christy Cutler. They have uprooted their life to live in a camper and travel the country. Why? Because God said so. And if he said so, that's enough for the Cutlers. I wanna to talk to them and I wanna hear more about this wild adventure and all that God has in store for them. So stick around. So me and Christy, like a lot of Christian people, grew up in um, you know, the church somewhat. I grew up a little more in the church than she did because I had a pastor as, as a father. She had a pastor as a father, but then early on when her mom and dad had split up, um, she didn't really go to church as much, even though she went to a Christian school. So our concepts of God, I think, were pretty consistent in our lives, but they were a little different. And I remember whenever we first met, um, I think through my life experiences and things that the Lord had done in my life in the past early on, my nature was a little more wild. You know, hers was a little more reserved. Maybe. A little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> you know, but just like every kite, it needs a string. And I felt like nice. the Lord really early on defined our relationship. Like, you know, I was just kind of, you know, in a sense, sometimes even reckless. I had a reckless abandon. And, you know, God, through his mercy and grace through the years has shaped that and, and, and God's wisdom and, and not taking the wild out of me, but showing me how by giving me a helpmate that can actually cause me to, to be grounded in the word, grounded in the truth, grounded in the intimacy of the father, where sometimes I might be a little flighty, you know, just as a kite would be. And uh, so when we first met, I remember there were it, right off the bat, we saw the challenges, you know, it was you know, but we were willing to risk it all for love and, and for what could be. Her story might be a little different than that, but that's yeah. how I see. <laughs> What's your story? <laughs> I feel like that's pretty accurate. I mean, he even has the tattoo to prove it um, because that was the joke. It was always like, you know, um, I was the gold part of the ring and he was the diamond, you know, and I'm like holding that shiny thing in place or the kite like, oh, you know, like, we're on an adventure, but I'm kind of, you know, wow. and, and they're both amazing, but they both have their shortcomings. And so it's funny when you look at our family, we, we are so different. We really are. I mean, it's in so many ways, but I think it is the goodness of God that like he, he chose to, to let us each shine by letting our strengths help each other's mm -hmm. weakness, you yeah. know? Um, I don't know. So it's been, it's been good and hard and all of those things, but I'm thinking, I mean, we're going on, you know, 14 years of marriage here. Wow. And I mean, let's go ahead and talk about the fact we're sitting in a camper. Hello. <laughs> Where are you right now? <laughs> Which is not just a camper, it's our home. And I'm like, how in the world, what are we, how did we get here? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. And so that's the cool part about being able to just sit here and talk about it and, and have these conversations because it has been a journey. It wasn't just like we got married and, oh, let's go move in a camper. It yeah. is so much more than that. Just before even getting together today, I mean, we've had a few rough days in a row and like the fleshly side of me is like, I want to go back and just have my own room so I can slam the door yeah. and have a moment. But there's nowhere to do that. There's nowhere to go. Here, let me turn my back on you for a second. Here, let me take two steps over and have an, you know, pity party. Oh, man. Stop your um, feet. But that's just, that's just the, the real part of it is here we are sitting in our home that has a beautiful story, but it's not all like, yeah, the walls are white and the curtains are cute. And we've done so many cute things, but it's been a journey for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. And I, you know, mm. that is what I feel on my yeah. heart right at this minute. But Yeah. And I think specifically about the journey, that's always stuck true to us because I think for so many years we struggled with the destination. We, we saw things like promises, visions. We saw things that the Lord had given us and we clung to them so tightly looking to the destination. But when we look back, we realized that God had way more to say in the journey but a lot of times we were denying his voice. It was clouded by distraction, hurt, pain, tragedy, whatever. And we chose to shut him out and we're clinging to the promises. And I think there's a place for that of as a believer to cling to his promises. 
but you don't cling to his promises so much that they become an idol that you actually don't have any dependence in that valley for the Lord. You don't actually invite him into the place of struggle. And, and what we have found is that a lot of people that hear our story are literally like, whoa. And then we share more and they're like, whoa. And they're like, whoa, they're like, does it ever end? And for us, it's like, it's kind of crazy because it does feel like it's a constant like, whoa moment. Yeah. But I, I feel like for us, we allowed the Lord, even when it was like so difficult, we allowed him to speak yeah. and allowed our hearts, even when we didn't want to hear his voice, yeah. allowed his His voice to shape and, and change our perspective so that it set us up for whatever the next moment was. And, and, and my heart has always rung true where it says, um, the eyes of the Lord look throughout the earth, looking for our hearts completely his. Yeah. And so many people want to define what that is. It's like, well, my heart's for you in the area of business or ministry mm. or being a father. Or, and there's, all those things are amazing. But what about a heart that's just his? Yeah. And it, the answer is yes. And if, okay. it, if it's today, if it's being um, you know, a minister to a widow, and if tomorrow it's to the orphan, and to the next day it's to the grocery store, and to the next day yeah. it's traveling in a camper. It's like, I want, to, I want my yes to resonate so much for me and my family that my family learns that whether in need or or not or want or you know sickness and health or yeah. whatever like we're going to serve the lord mm -hmm. and he's going to be the god and he's going to be our father in all things and all circumstances and there will be nothing to hinder yeah. us whether in the valley or the mountaintop yeah and i feel like you know figuratively there's always in our life we've always talked about mountains and valleys and and here we are now embarking on an actual physical journey yeah. to actually instill these times like i could tell the stories to my my three boys and look off and see the valley and the mountains of where we're going yeah. and actually give them a physical representation for the journey we've actually been as a family which yeah. is pretty amazing <laughs> it's it is i i look at you guys and i'm thinking you know um as christians it can be so easy for us to get so used to things and so comfortable. And we make a religion out of kind of our everyday, our routine and yeah. things. And um, I just keep hearing this word like ringing you out. And it's almost like the Lord through your life has just rung you out to like squeeze out any bit That's of good. religion, yeah. of like even opportunity to be religious, opportunity to idolize um, a pastor or a leader, or a, it's yeah. like you what you've walked through. And you, and you can only have that, occur and that's painful mm -hmm. but we can only ha have that occur if we're if we're walking through it yeah right in the good. midst and he squeezes us out and he rings us out of all complacency mm -hmm. and all and then when when that happens and all that's left is jesus mm -hmm. then you can sort of embark on a journey that's wild and out yeah. of the box yeah. and and that's where you are right now yeah. and that's yeah. what we're sitting in i mean we're in a physical representation of of what it looks like for the Cutler family. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's funny because the Lord, <clears throat> as we were kind of, I don't know, just embarking on all of this because it's happened in stages. You know, it didn't all happen at once, and um, some pieces of it came slower for me than they did him. Um, but you know, the, when the reality came that yes, this is something that we feel in our hearts that God is is has for us that we are going to sell our home. And <laughs> like when I say 90% of everything that we own, I every single bit of 90%, mm -hmm. like, um, and, and do this. Like I asked him, I was like, God, show me why and what for. And he hasn't given me all those pieces. There's a big part of it that's still a mystery, which for me excites me a little bit because I don't know exactly all the reasons, but a part of it came to me when I was reading the story in Numbers about when they sent the 12 spies to go and scope out the promised land. And um, the and it literally is when that all came clear to me, whether there's a passage in there when it was talking about the two, you know, 10 came back with a bad report and then there were two who came back and had something different to say, but it said um, that he had a different spirit in him, mm. you know, and said, but Caleb had a different spirit in him. And that was like, oh my gosh, but that different spirit was what brought back the good 
report, you know, wow. and um, one of the things I think the enemy has used to try to discourage us over the years was making us feel like there was nowhere that we would ever belong, mm. that we would never be able to fit in. There was never a box that could contain the wildness that is Amit Cutler of sorts, you know, and so we almost, almost started to buy into that of like, I think that's true. Yeah. And it wasn't true at all. I think it was that passage that said he had a different spirit in wow. him. And I think it's the Holy Spirit, you know? And because yeah. they go in there, there's 12. They all saw the same place. They saw the same things, all of them. So it wasn't like they these two went to a different place. Yeah. It was the same land, okay? 10 came back and they're like, we can't go in there. There's giants. These people are gonna kill us. Yeah. And this, and this, and this, you know? But those two came back and they said, yeah, okay, yes, but there's also fruit as big as my head. Wow. And God has made this land for us. And he said, those giants, and the, this is what's so funny. And we actually taught on it in one of our lighthouses. It said, those giants are bread for us. Yeah. So the thing that you're looking at, trembling and fear, God has actually set as your provision. Wow. Like, hmm. you know, and when you grasp that, I was like, the very thing that the enemy was trying to use to kind of like squelch what God was trying to do in us is actually the thing that he put in us to walk out our calling. Yeah. And the enemy wanted to quiet that, but he made us different for a reason. Yeah. And that reason was so that we could go out and we could do the thing that he has for us to do and see the hard things are actually for the glory of God yeah. because it's going to be our bread, you wow. know, and that basically means that those two, when they went out into that land, they weren't going in their own strength. I guarantee you they came back with a good report because they knew who was on their side. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't go and look at a bunch of giants and say, I'm not scared of that mm -hmm. in my flesh. Yeah. But I can come back and well. say, that's my provision. The Lord has my back because I know who I'm trusting in. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like, that's all I have to go on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. This is ridiculous <laughs> in all sense of the word. You know, I have three wild boys who don't stop moving from the moment they get up yeah. until they go to bed, you know, and I'm like, there's no other reason why we could go into something like this if not for trusting the Lord. Yeah. And that he said, go into the land and see that it is good and bring back the fruit and don't be afraid for yeah. I am with you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is for me, yeah. you know, mm. um, yeah. not because we have to go achieve this grand adventure, you know, like right. that's going to be a great part of it. Yeah. But there's a piece to it that God is asking us to go yeah. and to depend fully on him because I know good and well in my own strength. Yeah. There is no way. <laughs> right. You know, like I yeah. was just telling someone earlier, I'm like, I'm not a outdoorsy, campery, yeah. you know, bask in the you yeah. know bugs and you know humidity type right person. you don't bask in this humidity <laughs> I don't I'm like where's the air I know where's my comfy couch but you know I've got a pillow it's okay yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah. but they're like the hard things are going to be the good things when we're walking in obedience that's right and that's what I think so brilliant here with the Lord yeah. <laughs> like I it's pain here's Christy like ah yeah, um, but yeah, you because you see the goodness of God, you're seeing the right. fruit and the bread. Like the two of you are the two of them, and you're like, wait, we see. But it's like if you didn't have three boys and it was just the two of you, it might make a little more sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be a little. It's almost like anybody could do that. But God's like, I'm gonna throw in a child, then I'm gonna throw, and these are children, you know, that are like you know, your reward here on earth, yes, like they they're your promised children. I'm going to throw in three boys and I'm going to see if they'll still do the thing, yeah. you know, yeah. but he knew you would, yeah. he knew you would. And, and, and if it was easy, it'd be easy. Mm -hmm. But if it's not so easy, it requires that obedience, that radical, like you're worth it all. And so you guys are living that. Yeah. And it's so inspiring. The season that we were in Charlotte, I think was the first time that like, the Lord awoke a hunger in me for his word mm. and it happened when I wasn't even asking for it. And that's wow. what was crazy was because, you know, I was in, I think Isaac was 
seven, Jude was three, and Brooks was two. So I had two toddlers. It's like not, I'm still not sleeping. Like if there was ever a time that I did not want to get woken up at 5 a.m. morning after morning, it was then, mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, but I, it was happening supernaturally. That's yeah. what was weird. And um, God had me in the book of Daniel and I, like could not leave it. It was so weird. Mm. The first half of Daniel is just, you know, your token Bible stories, you oh, know, yeah. the fiery furnace, you know, writing mm -hmm. on the wall, the lion's den, you know, all of it, the things that we have all heard since we were little kids, you know, and on the felt boards in Sunday school. And he had me there literally tearing it apart mm -hmm. every word, like what is going on? And it was like months of just waking wow. up. Why? Like, I didn't understand, you know? Um, but I got to one part in it um, that was the chapter where Daniel interpreted the dream for King Nebuchadnezzar. And it was a little scary because, you know, the gist of it was the dream was about him, about, you know, this tree getting cut off and, you know, be basically being put out in with animals and all of this happening. And Daniel looked at um, Nebuchadnezzar and was like, woe to you. This is about you. Mm -hmm. But if you will repent from your sin and acknowledge the Lord most high as the Lord of your life, then mm -hmm. this is not going to come upon you. Basically all of the, this bad, these bad things, you know? And um, it said that he told Nebuchadnezzar that and then time passed and he walked out on his you know, balcony and said, look at this amazing kingdom that I have built. And it said the moment that he said that, it was all taken from him. Whoa. You know, basically Daniel said, this is about you. And if you will crush your pride and acknowledge God as the Lord of your yeah. life, you have a way out. But he's, he didn't listen. And he went out and basically said, I have done all of this. Look at my kingdom. Look at all of these great right. things that I have. And in, in a snap of a finger, it was gone. You know? Um, and for some reason, when I read that, it was like, I don't know. I, I shared it with Amic with like, I mean, right. Like you were going to go fishing. And I said, if you, <laughs> by the way, if you go fishing right now, instead of listening to what I have to say, <laughs> I knew literally it was one of those moments. Yeah, he yeah. knew that he did not need to go fishing. Right Whoa. Now. Good husband right there. <laughs> but I felt like in that moment, I said, I feel like in the trembling and tears that the Lord is speaking to us right now, that we have a chance to quiet the noise in our life and listen to what God is saying. And if we will wow. listen, he will speak to us and we have to obey and we have to acknowledge him as the Lord of our life. And if we will do that, the things that we fear and all of this the fear of punishment and being out of the will of God, they will not come on us. And we knew at that moment, there is a journey ahead of us. And it looks small in the natural. Basically, it meant it's not going to be a lot of stuff. And that was the start of it, I think. And we did a big purge at that point. And God led us back to Pensacola um, shortly after that um, for a season of just rest and healing and preparation oh. for where we are right now. And I think, you know, when you're going through that too, like if people that know us, like we weren't like, there's not these blatant sins. There's not this like disobedience and a lot of, you know, like right. people would classify as like they're running from the Lord. We were actually doing like good, amazing, godly things. But what the Lord, and it seemed almost like a rebuke whenever, when that word was delivered about King Nebuchadnezzar, you could almost see, feel shame. Right. You could feel condemnation. But what the Lord actually highlighted to me is that, when you are actually his kids and you're close and he says, Amic, it actually might mm. startle you mm. because you're so near and dear to him that when he actually says your name, it could almost startle you. And you might think, jump, like, right. are you mad? But it's because you're actually close to him and he's drawing That's you fierce. even closer. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like when he shifted that and I was like, no, this isn't a bad thing. It's because he loves me so much and I'm actually close to his heart that he's telling me a heavy word. But because I'm close to him, I'm going to get it. Right. And I'm not, it's not going to turn to disobedience. It's not going to turn to regret. Yeah. And uh, when he spoke that, God, even in his graciousness, had given us a word, a friend. It was funny. It was a friend from Charlotte. 
and which kind of plays into it. Like you, sometimes you don't know why you go where you go yeah, and you're just there. But if it wasn't just for this one word, like it was enough to give confirmation and I'll let her share a little bit of what the word was about. Um, yeah. She messaged me and the Lord gave her a dream basically that we were, um, on our journey it involved Amic and I and we were struggling to get up to the top of a mountain and um we like it was a struggle to get to the top and one side of it was sheer and I can't remember it all like verbatim um but I was at one point and then Amic runs to another place as if he's like going to get something scaling down and he's like going down the mountain to this place and were you working or? So I, live? she said there was like a window opening in the side of a cliff and I was kind of scaling down to get in there. Wow. But it was like a place that like no why, one yeah. could get to. Like why like would it you was try? super hard huh. and like no one would ever go there on purpose. And he yells up from there. He's like, um, <laughs> I'm going to get emotional again. He's like, I got it. I got it. We have running water. We have running water. And as soon as he said that, I, apparently she said that like my face was like lit up with joy as in like, like, okay, we, we can do this now or something. It was really weird. And so as soon as he said that, I like come down, you know, rush down to meet him. And, and yeah, she said, and she wondered and like, what are they doing? And she said, she realized in her spirit that the Lord said that they're going to live there. Like she knew in that moment, that's what it was a place of a sheer cliff in the wall of a cliffside that but we were going to live there and that we were excited and joyful about it. And uh, I remember her sharing that and it, it seemed like crazy to yeah, At the point we were like, <laughs> oh, maybe that means like, you know, we're going to trust God in the valleys and the mountains, oh, you know, my. and running water's provision, you know, like <laughs> at that moment, that's what we took it as. Yeah. And then as things have just unfolded, it has been yeah. just a, like, like a rope that we've held on to because the pieces are just really, I don't know, becoming clear as we've we're walking, you know, that out, mm -hmm. that it is a, um, even just that a part of it was sheer, you know, there's mm -hmm. an element of transparency, you know, that we've had to walk through to get here and that, you know, he has done a lot of the hard work. And, um, mm -hmm. but just the fact that like, it wasn't an easy place to go and it required leaving a lot behind, you know, like, you know, scaling down even for sure. You and know, only a few would be brave enough to, yeah. to go there. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord, after we'd gotten back, to, you know where we are now and started this process the Lord gave me a song and reflected on that word and just some of the read some of the lyrics and uh, go your own way go your own way and leave behind everything you fear there's a life source in the heart of the mountain and it will guide you to the place you call home the wild is calling you so you know what to do leave behind everything you fear there's a treasure in the wall of a cliffside there are few who can make it a home but there will be travelers who will wander and wonder, and in you they'll find refuge from the cold. And what the Lord has shown me was that, like sometimes He calls people to go to hard places, not just to experience, not just to explore for your own selfish desires, but to make a home in a hard place because there'll be travelers who might get there one day out of their own wonder, and it gets hard, and they're like, is there anyone that can help me right now? And then they might see literally a lantern in the wall of a cliffside and be like, is someone living here? <laughs> like, come in, come in and see what the Lord has done in this hard place. Like that's the revelation of the Lord. So like, when you look at what we're doing in that regard, it's like, yeah. whoa, you think of the wonder that the Lord is breathing, but what, how will we survive as a people if people aren't willing to go and reside in the hard places yeah. and say that yeah, no, He's going to be my life source and not just for me and my family, yeah. Yeah. but the travelers who continue to come, who may have only brought enough water for the, for the, their own journey yeah. and didn't know that they need the, needed enough to go back home. Yeah. You know, so, so where does that leave us now? Yeah. Traveling the country, like it's literally a hundred percent hands open, Holy Spirit. People keep saying like, what are your plans? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Like, I actually don't. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> with some of the visions glimpses that the lord's given you so far mm. about what might come who might come why you know one thing he showed me early on was that 
people are wrestling constantly with this 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 fear of like I know God's calling me into something, but I have no clue how to get there. Mm -hmm. And because of culture, because of even the way the church has stewarded things poorly, or Christians are just, you know, it's like we just have no model. It's like yeah. you know, whatever success looks like, if it don't look like that, how am I going to get there? And what the Lord has shown us is that. It's not good enough to say, I'm going to pray for you. It's not good enough to, to tell someone like, hey, if you need me, call me. It's not good enough. It, what's good enough is to say, you know what? I believe in what God's put inside of you, that I'm going to knock on your door one day and I'm not leaving until either God breaks and you walk in your full identity and calling of the Lord or you choose to walk away from it. Yeah. Like as a body of believers, we're calling people higher. Like. Yeah. That's what we're called to do. But the beautiful thing is that God's given us a compassion and a heart. So you don't have to walk alone. If you're if you're up for the task, aim at color will strap a shoot to you and I'll go down and I'll pull the cord for you. Like I believe that's that. who God's I've called me to that. be. Me and, and, and Donovan have seen it. Yeah. But if you're not ready for that, at least you'll know the reason why you don't see the breakthrough in your life is because you're not ready. Hey. It's not because yeah. of God withholding. It's not because of any other reason that you're just not ready. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah. But if you are ready, yeah. the cutlers are here yeah. and we're going to stay until it happens. Yeah. And I feel like that's a huge portion of ways. And I don't know where that's going to be. I get excited about that. Yeah. But yeah. Wow. What a day. I mean, I'm so challenged. I'm inspired. My amazing friends, the cutlers, you know, the way they've uprooted their lives, the way they're following God, the way they're obeying him right away. I think, I mean, that's what I tell my kids. That's what I teach my kids. Obey right away, you know, every day. And, um, and that's what they're doing. They're going for it. They're, they're believing what God says about them. They're believing him over their own thoughts, their own fears, their own doubts, the, the cultural norms, like what is normal for a large family, travel the world in a, in a camper, go where God says to go, be a blessing in communities where you don't know people. I mean, that's so encouraging and that's so inspiring. And I just pray that you're as encouraged and you're as inspired as I am. I'm challenged. I'm like, God, I want to obey right away like this amazing family and just know that this isn't just for them. This isn't just their journey. Their journey is meant to inspire you to pick up whatever it is that may be holding you back. And if God says, lay it down and go this way, lay it down and go that way. And just remember they're created for the impossible and you're created for the impossible.